Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video we are talking about INFJ persona. We are talking about why INFJs so often act like chameleons and we are talking about why the public perception of the INFJ is so incorrect. So if you spend some time browsing articles about INFJs, about how INFJs are perceived, how INFJs tend to act, what INFJs tend to do, you'll get a vastly different idea of the INFJ personality type than the real INFJ. Through this, there's so many stereotypes out there, so many misconceptions and so many mistruths about the INFJ personality type. Through this, most people don't really know what an INFJ is or how the real INFJ personality type really is. Now, the goal of personality psychology should not be to seek to understand how a personality type will present themselves, but rather what is really happening. What is really going on inside the mind of the INFJ personality type? What is the INFJ really like? So have you understood INFJs correctly? How do you see INFJs? If you believe that the INFJ is an empath, you might have been deceived. <laughs> if you believe that the INFJ is a mentor or guide, you might have been misled. If you think the INFJ personality type is some kind of social or counseling figure, uh, you might have been deceived. So the INFJ tends to present themselves as a man. And now I'm going to use my Jedi mind tricks to get you to press the subscribe button. If you haven't already, that subscribe button, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. And you know, you want to press it. You see this big red button, you want to press this big red button. If you press this big red button, you're gonna get a cookie. Anyways, let's get on with the video. Why do INFJs present themselves like a mask? Well, first of all, what we have to understand is INFJs have a very fluid idea of identity and of personality type. INFJs see identity and personality much different than most people. Where most people tend to have a steady sense of self or a steady sense of identity where they present themselves just the way they are. You know, some people what are what you see is what you get. INFJs are the very opposite of this. INFJs are the very opposite of what they present themselves as. INFJs are very different from the mask that they put on. INFJs see personality, social personality, behavior as a mask, as something that is created. If you look at popular, famous philosophers and academics that are INFJs, like, for example, Judith Butler, what you'll see is INFJs they tend to be very aware of how social personality is created. INFJs see personality as something performative, something you act out, something you execute, like a script. To an INFJ, personality is just an act. It is just how you have chosen to present yourself. That means INFJs see personality type as a kind of script. They, they see it as um, what you want to perceive yourself as, how you want to be seen by other people. And what you have learned is socially appropriate. INFJs often play with this mask and play with how they are perceived and that means INFJs will often intentionally uh, craft or weave a convincing illusion of themselves and INFJs often enjoy the prospect of being able to mislead other people or an audience to get other people to think they are a certain way than what they really are. INFJs enjoy deception to some extent. Yeah, INFJs enjoy the fact that other people can't really see their real self and INFJs enjoy playing with your expectations and how you think the INFJ is. INFJs uh, find it amusing if you get a false idea about them. INFJs find it uh, fascinating, you know, that you can think about them in a certain way and that you can see them so differently than what they really are. INFJs, beyond that, uh, use persona or masks as a way to really avoid overwhelm. Because INFJs are purely, predominantly intuitive creatures, INFJs spend more time living inside their own heads. That's where they are most comfortable, that's what feels the best to the INFJ, this inner world of ideas. 
INFJs are somehow convinced by their own ideas and sometimes tricked by their own deceptions. INFJs sometimes convince themselves that they are a certain way and then they act and follow this script blindly, believing that is the real version of themselves when in fact it is a very convincing mask. INFJs will sometimes watch movies about characters that they find fascinating, admirable, impressive, and then INFJs seek to act out and become this person because they find it a fascinating act, a fascinating persona, a fascinating personality. Yeah, you could say it's a um, sweet lie, a sweet uh, idea, a sweet uh, perception, a sweet deception. So INFJs enjoy these sweet deceptions, sweet lies, uh, plausible perceptions, plausible personas. That means INFJs they enjoy the idea that they can uh, somehow carry out an ideal or live out an ideal version of themselves or a perfect image or a perfect impression and to see how well they can carry an act and how far they can carry it. INFJs also use this in their sense of humor. That means INFJs often enjoy role play. That means INFJs will often act like they feel a certain way or act like they think a certain way just because it's fun and just uh, in order to create a nice show or an amusing act or a, a fun situation. Now, you might look at this and you might think, wow, that's really disturbing. Why are INFJs like this? Why can they not just be normal? Why can't they just be the real self? Why can't they just be authentic? Well, first of all, INFJs, they tend to be very lost. INFJs tend to be very skeptical of the idea of identity in itself. Is there really identity? Is there really a true self? Is there really an authentic version of who you are? Or is it all an act? How do you know the difference between the act and reality? How do you know the difference between the illusion and reality? How do you know the difference between an idea and the real world? And if you are an intuitive dominant person, if you are dominated by these ideas, if you are uh, possessed by ideas and by these visions and by these uh, illusions, if you feel like these illusions are the real world, if you feel that they are the truth, if you feel like they are what is real, instead of uh, traditions, the norms, the current world, the current reality, well, you'll have a very different take on this. Through this, INFJs don't even see it as a lie. Through this, INFJs often don't even think of it as deceptions. INFJs, to their point of view, see it as their normal way of being. This is their personality. Their personality is something performative. It is a love of acting. It is a love of ideas. It is a love of these different scripts and these different visions and these different illusions. These things are interesting things to the INFJ personality thing type. INFJs find this world to be the real world. And that's a very, very warped and very, very weird thing, you know. How can you think of these things as real? How can you uh, think that um, these things are possible? INFJs often put on a very idealized image of self. That means INFJs tend to uh, present themselves as uh, some kind of Jesus-like figure, you know perfect, morally flawless, a person of incredible intellect, a person of incredible charisma, a person of superior values and ethics. INFJs uh, often enjoy playing this uh, good guy character in movies, you know, they love to be this uh, good, uh, perfect, amazing person that is always going to do the right thing, that is always going to be incredible, that is always going to be amazing. INFJs love to play empaths. They love to play, you know, um, uh, caregivers, people that comfort you, people that help you, people that support you. INFJs prefer acts and social scripts that will move society forward in some way, that will help other people, that will make the world a better place, that will uh, set a positive example for other people. That means INFJs carry out roles and acts and scripts that will educate the world in some way, that will help the world somehow, that will help other people somehow. INFJs therefore have often good intentions with everything they do. 
What they say is carefully scripted, their words are carefully chosen, their behavior, their personality is a plausible illusion and it is a convincing illusion. INFJs enjoy acting out a script to perfection. They want to carry it out 100% without any flaw, without any issues, without anything that will cause you to feel doubt about them or who they are. Now, this also means that INFJ can cause themselves to be drained, you know, because sometimes carrying out this script, that's very difficult. To hold up this image to the world is exhausting. A lot of the time, INFJs, they're exhausted by the role they feel they have to play in society, you know. To be so intelligent, or to be so charismatic, or to be so kind, or to be so helpful, or to be so focused on other people is straining. It is exhausting the INFJ's resources, and that is why the INFJ is often so torn between participating in the world and pulling away from it. Yeah, INFJs might enjoy the idea of retreating to an abandoned island or isolating themselves from other people or detaching themselves from society because it's overwhelming, draining, exhausting to play out these roles or to be this kind of person for others. And that means you need to be very, very careful with how you choose to perceive the INFJ and what expectations you have of the INFJ personality type. And if you are an INFJ, you have to be very careful with what roles you choose to play and how you choose to act. Ideally, you want to find a role or a persona or a personality that will help you as much as it helps other people. You want to find a way to act, a way to be, a way of life, a script, a moral code, an ideology that will uh, match and will create a healthy persona or idea or example for yourself and for other people and this is going to match the INFJ's idea of authenticity because for an INFJ, as an INFJ, you'll find there is no authentic self, there is no authentic personality, no authentic real you. You'll find that there are many different ways that you could choose to be or act depending on what is uh, positive for environment or for yourself or what will carry you further or what will help you realize your ideas but you'll find that there is a script that will allow you to be more healthy more happy and more rounded and so INFJs your authentic self is the self that you can act out the script that you can act out the personality that you can choose to present yourself as that will feel effortless for you and that won't drain you of energy, that won't exhaust you, that won't uh, cause you to uh, feel lost or stressed or overwhelmed. You want to find a script, a way of being that is going to feel positive, rewarding, enriching for you as well as healthy for you to act out in a longer perspective. You, you might find yourself drawn to these um, uh, you know, societal ideals, you know, the Mahatma Gandhi's, the Martin Luther King figures, you know, these people that sacrifice themselves and their emotional health, put themselves at risk, put themselves in grave danger in order to help society or help humanity. But if you look at these characters more closely, you'll find that a lot of time they were faced with immense stress, pain, anxiety, and difficulty, you know, so the more difficult the script you choose to play out, the more it is going to hurt you, the more it's going to drain you of your resources, the more exhausted it's going to make you feel. And I don't think that you have to die for humanity. I don't think you have to um, become a martyr for anyone. I don't think you have to choose a role that will limit you or cause you pain or hardship. The empath role, the empath role that a lot of INFJs become addicted to, you know, uh, where people come to you as a mentor, people come to you for advice, people come to you for healing, people come to you for being understood, you know, is one of those damaging scripts because it denies your true nature. The INFJ personality type needs to find a script, a way of being, a healthy way of acting that will connect to the intuitive world of ideas because you have to recognize ideas are your primary fuel. That means as an INFJ, 
You need to let your love of ideas, of creativity, of philosophy flow. You need to let that be what drives you forward. That is your engine. That's what's going to get you energy. So if you ever feel exhausted, if you ever feel like it's difficult to be yourself around other people, go into the world of ideas and start exploring this world. Fascinate yourself with all these ideas and possibilities ask yourself the most difficult questions about the reality we live in and the world of which we are a part of. As an INFJ, learn to read between the lines. Notice the difference between how you act and what you're thinking. Notice, pay attention, be mindful of your thoughts and of what you choose to do and how you choose to be there's going to be a difference. There's going to be something that doesn't match up. There's going to be something that um, doesn't quite fit. And INFJs, if I can give you one piece of advice, that is seek spellbreakers. <laughs> seek people that can dispel illusions. Seek people that can see the real you. Seek people that can see past what you choose to put out to the world. When people start idealizing you, when people start thinking you're amazing, when people start thinking you're incredible, when people start seeing you as something else than human, you'll start to feel like something else than human. You'll start to feel detached, cut off. You'll start to feel like um, you are just this mask. You are just this superhuman example. You're not a person with feelings, emotions, needs. and Believe me, you are. You are a human, and that means if you can find people that can see the real you, if you can find people that can ask questions, the right questions, people that can go, but is that really you? Is that really what you need? Is that really what you want? I still don't think so. I think there is something more there. I feel like there's something hidden. I feel like there's something you're not telling me, you know? Seek out those people. Seek out those people that can read between the lines, those people that can ask the hard questions, the people that can dispel illusions. INFJ, these are my personal confessions. Uh, you might say these are the confessions of a chameleon, first of all. It is difficult for an INFJ to maintain a strong idea of who they are because other people have such a strong idea of who you are. The stronger people's expectations are on you, the more vividly you experience other people's needs, the more attuned you are to other people's thoughts and uh, impressions, the more lost you become. So you need to be very, very careful when other people start to build an idea of you in their heads, when you notice strong expectations from other people, when you're starting to notice need from others, when you're starting to know that people are idealizing you. Be very, very careful of this and start to prod. Start to stop playing along. That means start doing things that will cause them to ask questions, start to go, wait, what? Was this really what I thought? This was not what I expected. This was not what I thought the INFJ was. You know, start um, unraveling the illusion. Start showing them that there is more going on than what they think. If people idealize you, <laughs> stop playing along with the ideal. Confession number two. The more you try to appease other people, the more alone time you're going to need. That means the more you find yourself playing along with and playing to people's expectations and needs, the more exhausted you're going to become, the more alone time you're going to need. So if you find that you constantly need to detach yourself from other people, if you find yourself constantly seeking out alone time, if you find yourself constantly drained by other people, that's a sign that you're not being the real you with other people, you're not being in a way that is healthy for you. Number three, the more time you spend with other people, the higher the chance that you are going to lose your sense of self. So if you find that you're never taking time for yourself, if you find that you're never giving yourself alone time, if you find that you feel that you constantly have to be on for other people, you're going to find that you become gradually more lost. 
the personality that you act out with the other person is going to feel more and more empty. It's going to feel like you don't have anything inside anymore. It's going to feel like uh, there is no you in the you that you act out anymore. So be very careful of this. Confession number four. INFJs want to be defined by who they are, not who they are to other people. So INFJs don't want you to define them by how they act towards you or other people, but who they are to themselves. So if you can make the INFJ feel seen for who they really are, and if you can ignore what they act like towards you, that's going to create a more meaningful relationship. That's going to create a relationship that is stronger, more intense, more real. That means, for example, stop talking about oh, what they do for you, for example, or the things they do, the acts of service, the listening, you know, and start thinking about who is the INFJ to the INFJ. Number five, the more people idealize the INFJ, the less human the INFJ is going to feel. That means, okay, uh, the more you start to build an ideal of the INFJ, the less human you're going to make them feel. So be careful not to make the INFJ feel like they're perfect or amazing or incredible. Instead, make the INFJ feel like a human being. Make them know that you see both their strong sides and their flaws. Make them know that you see both their struggles and how they excel. Both their pains and their positivity. You see the real INFJ and that means see the whole INFJ. Confession number six. INFJs are truth seekers. That means INFJs... When they are acting out these scripts, when they're acting out these ideas, when they are uh, putting on this show for the world, they are doing it because they're trying to figure out the truth. They're trying to understand you better. They're trying to find a way to carry out a vision. They're trying to understand the reality, life, philosophy, why we're here. Their act is there as a tool in order to help them understand people better. So they're doing this because they are intellectuals. First and foremost, INFJs are intellectuals, people that want to understand the nature of identity, relationships, connection, people, social relationships. INFJs do everything they do because they want to learn about the world that they live in. So allow yourself to be a truth seeker. Number seven, ask the INFJ for the truth because INFJs rarely lie. Now this might seem contradictory, oh, but if the INFJ is constantly playing a role, they're never real, they're always lying to other people. But that's not true. INFJs, they are very careful to be authentic. Their goal is to find the truth and they believe that truth is the only thing that can set them free. So, INFJs will be honest with you if you ask them. If you ask them what their real needs are, what their real struggles are, what their real feelings are, they're going to tell you. So, ask them the questions, uh, show them that you are curious about their real self, and you're going to get it. So. It's as simple as that. If you uh, want the show, they're going to give you the show. But if you ask them for the behind the scenes, they're going to give you the behind the scenes. So INFJs will give you exactly what you need. So exactly what you want. <laughs> and uh, they want you to ask about the behind the scenes. They want you to see what's behind everything. And they want you to figure it out. Number eight... INFJs want your absolute honesty without restraints. That means INFJs appreciate people that can be absolutely honest, absolutely real, absolutely 100% themselves. So if you can be the real you, uh, INFJs are going to find you fascinating. If you're going to be honest, if you're going to show them truth, they're going to enjoy you, appreciate you for it. I'm going to talk more about this in a second. First, number nine, INFJs want to be seen without illusions. So, 
anything that is solutions, uh, they want you to know that they're playing out an act. They want you to know that they're playing out the script and they want you to enjoy it. They want you to find it funny. They want you to find it fascinating. They want you to find it compelling. So if they are trying to be a certain way and you can see that it's an act and if you can enjoy that act, they're going to like it. Number 10, INFJs want you to challenge what you see. So if you see that they are playing a role, if you see that they're carrying out a persona or a script, challenge that, you know, in whatever way you want, but challenge that. Feel free to act or take on the opposite role. Feel free to mirror them. Feel free to push or question or prod at what they're doing um, and do so humorously. I mean, INFJs enjoy it and enjoy being challenged and enjoy meeting people that will be antagonists or that will uh, go that won't play along now all of this comes down to one important thing one important truth about INFJ personnel type INFJs are truth seekers and I've said this before what I, I want to go into this more deeply because INFJs are INFJs don't buy who you say you are. INFJs don't believe that you are what you present yourself as. INFJs don't believe that you are being your authentic version of yourself. I mean, you might think that you are being authentic. You might think that you're being who you are. But chances are INFJs find your, you to be playing out a boring, repetitive script. <laughs> a lot of INFJs might think that, oh, yeah, this person thinks they are a certain way or thinks they are a certain person, but no, you're not. You have something deeper to you. You have some um, hidden nature that you're unaware of. So INFJs, they want to figure that out. They know that they think that you're playing a script. They're playing a script. They know they're playing a script, most likely. Uh, and they know that you are playing a script. So they want to find out your deeper nature. <laughs> they think that everything that you do is an act. They think that everything you do is uh, something performative. They think that personality is something that people just carry out. And um, they think that everyone is doing it. Of course, the question is, are you? Are there people that are real? Are there people that are just who they say they are? Are there people that um, are exactly what they appear like or does everyone have a hidden nature? Does everyone have a hidden self that they are unaware of? Those are my questions for you all. Thank you all for watching and I hope this video, albeit controversial, helped you understand INFJs better and helped you understand INFJs better. Know that I speak with INFJs about INFJs with absolute love and care. I find INFJs fascinating. I admire INFJs. I find myself uh, excited whenever I get the chance to talk to an INFJ. I enjoy the INFJ's sense of humor. I enjoy the INFJ. I appreciate the INFJ. I love the INFJ and who they are and uh, their ability to craft these convincing perceptions. And I enjoy the hidden nature of the INFJ and I enjoy the multifacetedness of the INFJ uh, so much. So yeah, thank you all for watching and do consider subscribing if you enjoy videos like this.